going on everybody it's your boy mood 616 back in this motherfucker yo what is going on everybody yes this is going to be a brand new dvd and blu-ray update for the month of march now i do know it is like mid-april right now and it's not because i'm lazy it's because i was actually out of town for like the first five six days of the month so when I got back into town, uh, I got really busy and shit like that. Hence why it is like now almost mid-April when I'm doing this update. So, but here it is. Uh, I haven't really got much in the month of April anyways. I've only got like two or three things in. Because I made an order uh, to the Warner um, Warner Brothers Archive, Warner Archive um, I guess their last sale that they were having and stuff. So I did like an extremely big order, ordered like 20 things. Uh, my man, Mr. Parker, Dave is actually helping me out with that because they don't ship to Canada. But anyways, that's the craziest thing that that order, like I did that on, I think like March 20th still hasn't even shipped. So I don't even know if it's going to be in, like, I'll probably get it sometime next month, but I don't know. So my actual pickups for April are going to be pretty low because I have so many things on pre-order, man. There's just box sets and shit everywhere and stuff. So without further ado, this is what I picked up in March. Um, literally everything that came in in March. So yeah, start with the DVDs. Uh, we got Lethal Nightmare here. Uh, this is a Polonia Brothers movie. Um, I'm not actually sure when this one came. It says an early motion picture. So I'm, I'm assuming this is one. I think this one's like from the early 80s, like 80, 83, 84, somewhere in that realm or something like that. But, you know, of course, shot on video goodness from the Polonia Brothers. Um, but yeah, I don't know why SRS. You know, they do a good job with these. They do good um, artwork and they're all like uniform and stuff, but they don't have the years of the actual movie. They have the release date, which is 2020. Yeah, it says 2020, even though it just came out, I think. But anyways, Lethal Nightmare, sorry about sorry about the glare. Because, you know, most people like to come here for the glare, right? Anyways. Um, only the good parts. Trailer compilation. I thought this was pretty cool, man. I came across this and I was like, damn, that's really interesting. So it's basically just trailer comps that are cut up into, you know, the best parts of the movies and stuff. So it's something you probably want to be watching if you've seen all these movies, you know. It's kind of like cliff notes for the horror films, I guess. I don't know how you want to put it, but pretty cool stuff. I watched it. It's fun. Um, yeah, I love me my, my trailer comps, man. As everybody knows, I have like ridiculous amounts of these, but they never get old to me, man. It, they just never get old. So only it looks like only the food parts, <laughs> but cool artwork on this. Uh, this was released by Glow in the Dark Pictures. You know, not even too sure. So that's an interesting one. And then we got badass motherfuckers um uh, black exploitation compilation from the fine folks over at full moon you know and it even says directed by charles ban like he fucking directed all you had to do is edit clips together fucking charles ban probably found these somewhere in the warehouse didn't he um <laughs> yeah so black exploitation stuff i mean this one actually i think it is uh hosted by fred the hammer williamson one of my favorite actors of all time I'm, i love me some fred williamson so yeah i'm gonna start just kind of picking off these uh these full moon compilations i know they're cheap and they look like shit and stuff but whatever they're usually pretty cheap and stuff and you know might as well grab them but love me some black exploitation that everybody knows uh this one was interesting i came across this um it's from the film the guys that did uh, the VHS Liz and VHS Nasty, and I think there was a third one also. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, this one is called Oh the Whore. So another um, horror documentary, which I have not got around to watching. In fact, I haven't really got around to watching a lot of these releases this month, uh, or from my March pickups, because I was so busy with watching other stuff, for like 2005 prep for the podcast, and um, this podcast in general, just a whole pile of shit, dude, I just never got to a lot of the shit that I picked up, so, which is weird, because I usually do watch a fair amount of stuff, so, but I digress once again, oh, the whore, this kind of looks pretty cool, from celluloid to snuff, um, Explore the fascination with horror and all things creepy and macabre as we dissect some of the best cult horror films ever made in this bone-chilling documentary. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, well, whatever. So they're dissecting certain films, so that's kind of cool. Check that out. Now, this is one that I actually ordered last year, and it got lost in the post. And then um, Amazon was like out of them. So they just refunded me my money. And then I completely forgot about it. I was going to reorder it and I never ended up reordering it. And I um, came across it again uh, last month. So I reordered it. And this is the um, Monsters Crash Pajama Party Spook Show Spectacular. Um, so yeah, this thing's actually kind of cool. It comes with like 3D glasses, like, you know, like the old red and, the red and blue 
old school 3D glasses and shit like that. And I don't really even know what the hell I'm getting myself into with this. It runs about 214 minutes and it seems like there's a whole pile of like crazy shit on here and stuff. I don't really know. I don't really know what it is. So, but it looks pretty damn cool and I want to check it out. So for Halloween and shit like that. So, um, yeah, looks pretty damn cool. It's cheap, man. It was like seven bucks or something. Um, from Unearthed Films, I finally got around to picking up Dead Fury, man. I think this is out of print now. And it, I actually, um, Amazon had it prime for, I want to say it was like six or seven. It was super cheap, man. I was like, holy shit, man, I should grab that. Uh, from the guy that did, um, or from the creators that did City of Rot, which, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people had the problems with the, uh, the animation on that and shit like that. I'm, I'm assuming it's probably going to look the exact same, but, um, the ultimate experience in grueling animated horror. Dead Fury. Looking forward to checking that one. It was just another film release I didn't own. Uh, so the next batch of DVDs I actually got at a charity shop. Um, I had no intentions of going to the charity shop that day, but the place I had went down to go to, I went to the store and they, it turns out they were actually closed that day. It was very strange. So anyways, I was going back home and I had some time to kill and I was driving by this thrift shop. So I was like, fuck it, man. I'm going to go in there. And I usually go into this place like Value Village basically come out maybe with one movie or something like that like I never find anything and I hadn't been in there probably since this whole COVID shit had even started so probably like over a year ago and it was crazy I just kept finding stuff on the shelves I was willing to pay like a buck or two for the DVDs for this was crazy now I couldn't leave this sitting on the shelf this is an umbrella release of the return of swamp thing now I know MVD put out the blu-ray which I never did upgrade I have the old M MGD the MGD the MGM uh DVD of this um, but I couldn't leave this sitting on the shelf because, you know, if you live in a small city like mine, you never come across import DVDs or anything like this, you know, sitting in a thrift shop. So this was kind of an odd find uh, for like two bucks. But I just thought, what the hell, man, I'd pick it up. You know, it's fucking umbrella release and shit like that. But, you know, maybe one of these days I'll grab the, the Blu-ray of it. But it's not really a big favorite of mine, even though I do actually prefer this over the original. I know it's fucking blasphemy, right? I'm just not a big Swamp Thing fan, man. I never have been. I think it's one of Wes Craven's worst films, to be honest, um, from that era of his films. I'm not talking about his newer stuff, but ugh. Uh, but Jim Warnowski took a more comical approach to it, and so it's, you know, it is what it is, and of course it's got the beautiful Heather Locklear in it. <laughs> Amazing. But just such a random find around here. So I uh, found a couple more Scooby-Doo's actually in there that I didn't own, which is kind of cool. So picked up Scooby-Doo and the Loch Ness Monster, uh, I've yet to see this one before, so yeah, you know what I mean. I'm always finding Scooby Doo shit because I'm a big ass fucking kid. Um, Scooby Doo Camp Scare. Um, I think I've actually seen this one. I think this one came out in the early 2000s, I want to say, and I think I've seen this one, so. Um, but yeah, Scooby Doo Camp Scare, kind of cool for a buck a piece. Now, this is actually one of the ones I didn't order on the, uh, the Warner Archive sale. Uh, I know this has a Blu-ray and I just opted out of it. Like I said, I grabbed 20 titles and I kind of ran out of, you know, I could have grabbed more, but I was like, ah, fuck, I'm pushing my luck with 20 already. But this is one that I actually didn't grab, which I, you know, I probably intended to I'll maybe grab one day, but I came across, it just didn't own the, the movie at all. But the man with two brains, Steve, Steve Martin, um, snapper case. And it's like in really good shape, like. It looks brand new. It doesn't even look like the disc has even been played, which is kind of cool. Because a lot of times you get these older snapper cases and they're in pretty rough shape. But this obviously came from a collector. It's pretty fucking good shape. So, um, but yeah, the man with two brains. Eh, it's fun. It's fun. I haven't seen it in a lot of time. A lot of years. A lot of time. I've seen a lot of years. Uh, Van Damme movie I didn't own. Um, you know, I'm not really the biggest Van Damme fan. I'm not like... You know, I'm not trying to collect all the 88 film Blu-rays and stuff like that. But this is one I, you know, for a buck, I'm not going to let it sit in there. But Sudden Death, I remember digging this one. Um, so, need to check this one out again. Peter Hims directed this one. Powers Booth, the fucking man, Powers Booth. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen Sudden Death. So, yeah, for a buck, whatever. Now, this is kind of cool. I never find shit like this in that thrift shop. I thought this was kind of interesting. But an original Anchor Bay release of Diamonds. Fucking crazy, man. I, you know, it's um, it's like a crime heist, or not crime heist, it's a drama, cr drama crime film kind of thing. But the cast is crazy in this movie. It's been years since I've actually seen this before. Uh, it's got Robert Shaw, Richard Roundtree, Shelley Winters, and Barbara Hershey. That's a crazy cast right there, man. Um, but yeah, in really good shape. Still had the insert and everything. So, you know me, whenever I come across original Anchor Bays, I always pick them up. Um, for the most part, I some of the TV series and shit I don't pick up, but they're fucking TV series, but... But yeah, Diamonds, cool thing. I got to revisit that one. It's been a lot of years. Now, here's one I'd never even heard of. And it looks like it's a pretty cheap release of it. But I, And it says it's from the early 90s, 1992. And I couldn't leave it sitting there. And I was just like, you know what? 
fuck it, man. It's got Rugger Hauer in it, and Elliot Gold in it, and shit. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta check this out, man. So Beyond Justice with the man Rugger Hauer. So yeah. Yeah, it's one of these cheap ass early, early DVDs, man. It says 2000 it was released in, but yeah, you can tell. Like, look at that shit. <laughs> you know, this is gonna be like, uh, it's got to be full screen. It's got to be fucking full screen. Doesn't mean actually tell you, but probably full screen VHS transfer. I don't know, but who knows? Uh, this was kind of a cool thing. I actually used to have this on VHS back in the day, and uh, I got rid of all those VHS years and years and years ago never re-picked this up and it's you know i'm like fuck it man i'll grab it man but Schwarzenegger's pumping iron the um the special edition 25th anniversary special edition which is kind of cool man comes in this nice little nifty gray case and shit got a bunch of features and uh pretty cool man um fuck arnie was massive that's just stupid right there early 70s right it's crazy uh, a couple more animated things i picked up um grandma got run over by a reindeer I love this this animated movie. It's fucking fun as hell. It came out like what early two thousands, I think, maybe two thousand. Yeah, it's fun, man. Christmas film, pretty cool. So, and last up for the DVDs, I this was actually something I was gonna buy last year, and I just completely slipped my mind because I'm actually a huge Inspector Gadget fan, and um, so I wanted to grab the Christmas thing because you guys know me with Christmas things. I I grab so many Christmas things, things. I don't know why I keep saying things. Movies, shorts, whatever. Um, but Inspector Gadget saves Christmas, which is kind of cool. I think this was like a later... I'm not sure actually when they did this this special. I believe it came out in the early 2000s, I want to say. It was like a... It was way after. And then there's a couple bonus episodes from the original series on here and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. But but yeah, Inspector Gadget saves Christmas. Yeah! Awesome. So, I mean, that's it for the DVDs. Nothing crazy. You know, I don't really buy a lot of DVDs anymore. So, um, But I was just shocked to find those things at the charity shop because like i said i never come across um you know items like that so sorry for my fucking reach here um but anyways we'll get into the blu-rays here i'm not editing this video it's just raw and uncut you know how we do it here um all right so getting into blu-rays here with a couple standard things uh picked up the evil dead uncut uh release um you know it actually comes with a theatrical you know what's kind of crazy about this so so we just did the evil dead franchise a couple weeks on the podcast and i went to go watch the remake and i went to go pull my blu-ray out fucking can't find it i have no idea where the the theatrical blu-ray went but i was like you know what fuck it man i'm like i'm gonna order the um the uh un i wanted to watch the uncut version i really wanted to see what the differences were and, and there is man that you know there is a little bit of um, added on extended gore scenes and things like that. And there is a couple other scenes that kind of add to the film uh, to do with dead bodies and what happens to them and stuff like that. So there, there is the, you know, the, you know, the pros to getting it and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. And it does again. So it comes with theatrical and the uncut. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still not a huge fan of this remake. Um, you know, if you guys want to know my, my full opinions on it. I go on a pretty fucking <laughs> big rant on the podcast about it. Um, by no means do I think it's a terrible movie. I just, I have a lot of issues with it, man. Um, but yeah, it's gory as shit though, man. The un the unrated version is uh, gory as shit, man. It's crazy. Nice little extended gore scenes. Uh, finally picked up Horror Noir. Um, the history of black horror, you know, on um, black exploitation horror and stuff. Um, Shutter original documentary. Uh, I've seen it before. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I I actually really want to check this out again. I just remember being really short. What's the length on this thing? Yeah, 83 minutes, man. I thought it was too short. And I thought they could have had a, just a little bit more interviews and stuff like that. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's still, it's dope. You know, I'm a big documentary fan. So having this in the collection is definitely a must. But yeah, it's actually the first Shutter release I've ever picked up out of all the movies. And they, they released some really good films last year. So might have to grab a few more. But yeah, Horn of War cool stuff right there i am fucking completely out of out of room in this room man as you can tell and, and people ask me all the time why i film in here it's because this room my music studio is downstairs in my house and it's just usually the quietest place to record because upstairs in my film room it's a little crowded it's hard to film up there and plus this one has carpet it doesn't echo it's i don't know i just I, it's just comfortable down here but yeah this is the music room if you're wondering why or what the room is it's not movies behind me it's 
music, you know, physical movie or music, you know. A lot of the kids watching this are going, what the fuck's a CD or vinyl or tape? I don't know what that is. Those are hard copies. I just press a button on my iPod. Um, anyways, um, yeah, so I picked up Hostel, double feature Hostel uh, 1 and 2. It's just upgrades for me. Um, prepping for 2005, I just wanted to see Hostel on Blu-ray. Uh, I think the Blu-ray looks a little bit better than the DVD, I want to say. Um you know, at the end of the day, man, I'm still I'm still not a big fan of Hostel either. I know, fucking blasphemy. No, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that hate. And I'm not one of those, and I'm not one of those um, uh, Eli Roth haters. I actually don't mind Eli Roth at all. Um, I'm just not a big fan of Hostel, to be honest. Um, it just, it grits on me, man. I got a lot of problems with it. I don't want to get into it right now, but I just have a lot of fucking problems with the, with the movie, man. Um, but I've seen it many times. It's this last time I watched it, I was like, no not doing it for me man not doing it for me so yeah it is what it is um next up here is a release from magnet and uh, it's called officer down <laughs> now <laughs> this fucking movie man holy shit um i gotta give a shout out to my man extra the mutilator for recommending me this one so i was watching his update probably maybe a couple updates ago and he was talking about this movie called officer down and the way he described it as was if Hobo with a shotgun and something like Robocop had a love child. This is what you get. Officer down. Pretty bang on. It's pretty bang on, actually. It's very exploitive. It's it's over the top and ridiculous. Um, oh, shit, dude. What a fun-ass movie. I was fucking laughing through this whole thing. It was funny. But it is, man. It's it's completely over the top and just ridiculous. But the name Officer Down, <laughs> because it's Officer Down. But yeah, so he gets killed and he gets gets brought back to life and shit. And and the thing about Officer Down is that he can't fucking die. He dies like every day. It's hilarious. It's so funny. Um, so yeah, through technology and shit, it, it's really fucking fun. I had a blast with this, but <laughs> it won't be everybody's cup of tea. But I can guarantee some people that are watching this channel you know, might take my opinion seriously and actually enjoy this one, but it is, it's, it's a stupid movie, but it's fun. It's fun. Uh, I picked up the Defiant One docu documentary. Uh, this is some really good shit right here. Um, yeah, what a stupid release though, man. Really stupid release. So, so it's a DVD, uh, Blu-ray combo pack, which is cool, right? But the thing is there's two Blu-rays and two DVDs. So these fuckers are stacked on here. Really? Like it's like 2021 and we're still stacking shit. You couldn't have just had a flipper thing in there where, and you had all four discs like on a tray and shit. Are you kidding me? I guess that's why it was like seven bucks, but whatever, man. Um, yeah, I had to pick this up, man. This is really good shit, man, if you're into, you know, this type of stuff. But yeah, Dr. Dre and, and Jimmy I Iovine. Uh, now, this release right here was, oh my God, fucking Amazon, man. I swear to God, they do this shit to me all the time. I probably wouldn't have picked this up. Or maybe I would have. I don't know. I I guess I probably could have checked to see what the Blu-ray actually, you know, what the reviews were and stuff like that on here. But anyways, I picked up the Triad Trilogy, which consists of Election, Triad Election, and Triad Underworld. I believe, I think the first movie, Election, at least is a, is a Category 3 film. All three of them might even be Category 3 films, if I'm not mistaken. I know Quentin Tarantino loves Election. I, I've heard him talk about this film many, many times. I've been wanting to check it out for years. But, but anyways, the listing said that this Triad Trilogy Blu-ray was three discs. Now, it, they must have fucked up and been like, okay, we assume it's three discs because it's three movies. But yeah, no, it's just three movies. It's one fucking disc, man. I'm like, what the hell is this shit gonna look like? And I was wondering about the price too, man, because the price is really cheap on it. So I was like, oh man, for a triple disc, that's pretty fucking crazy. No, it's one disc. It's fucking one disc. Um, but yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about these. And I'm assuming it's probably a 50 gig disc. And you know, none of the movies are actually that long. Like they only run 192 and 82 minutes. So they're they're not like two and a half hour fucking, you know, craziness movies and shit like that. So um Yeah, I'm I'm very curious to f to know what the actual quality of the Blu-rays is. If anyone has this out there and has seen these movies on this release, let me know what they look like. I guess I could probably just look it up on Blu-ray.com and stuff like that. But uh um, yeah, I just thought that was very odd to have three movies in this day and age on one disc and shit, but fucking Amazon, you got me again, you motherfuckers. No, it, it was, I mean, the price was so cheap as, you know, anyways, it's not really a loss, so. 
uh, some more uh, Donnie Yen stuff with Dragon. Um, now, I've heard nothing but good things. Actually, I think uh, actually the Mutilator even talked about this one. I had actually picked this up, I think, before he even did his update, so... I'm not, I'm not taking all your, no, no, he's, he's a great guy, man. If you guys don't know who Extra the Mulator is, uh, check him out, man. Um, he does uh, some great updates. He always talks about interesting movies and shit like that. But, but anyways, I digress. I've been on a big Donnie Yen kick, as you probably noticed from the last two or three updates. Um, I've been picking up lots of Donnie Yen shit. I love him. He's great. But this is one I've actually had in the cart for a long time and I've heard nothing but good things. Then here, Extra talk about it. I was like, fuck yeah. I think actually even Explosive Action, Simon might've talked about this one too. I could be wrong on that. I don't know, Simon, if you're watching this, let me know if you were talking about this one, because I know you're a big fan of, you know, Asian craziness too, so. But anyways, Dragon, um, looking forward to checking that out, so. And this is funny. So I picked up uh, The Dead Zone, because we did a David Cronenberg show um, a little while ago on the podcast, and I just wanted to upgrade for my DVD, because I remember the DVD looking like shit, like looking very, very shitty. Uh, this is one of those Biovision releases? Yeah, Biovision releases from Australia. I think it's region free. Um, I didn't actually end up watching this. I ended up watching because I actually got this after the show because it took so fucking long to come. Uh, it does say region B, but I think someone told me that it might, don't quote me on this, but it might be region free. I don't know. Like uh, most Australian releases, they're sneaky with that shit. Uh, but anyways, I digress again. I feel like I'm on the podcast, 22 shots of fucking tangents and horror. Um, Screen Factory just announced this, actually, what, yesterday, I think, yesterday or the day before or something, so I thought that was actually kind of funny. I won't be grabbing, I'm not the, I like The Dead Zone, I think it's a great film and stuff, but, you know, I'm sure that this Blu-ray is fine, unless they did a new transfer stuff. I heard that the transfer on this might be a little bit whatever, but, um, you know, it is what it is. It's not one of my favorite Stephen King adaptations or, and or Cronenberg movies, but I do dig it. I think it's good. I think Christopher Walken's excellent in the film, and I really love the ending. The ending's great, this movie. So yeah, that is The Dead Zone. Uh, from Synapse Films, we've got Running Time. Man, I can't believe that this movie got a fucking release, man. I, I'm just so excited that this came out. I've always wanted to check this out. It's a film from 1997 starring the one and only Bruce Campbell. Um, and it's in black and white. It's a really short movie. It only runs about 70 minutes long. So it says, inspired by Alfred Hitchcock's Rope and filmed over 20 years before Sam and his 1917 and blah, Okay, anyways. Um, but yeah, I've, I've heard it's it's a pretty interesting watch. It's good for, you know, at least a watch or two. But, you know, it snaps. They always do such a great job. But anytime you can get some Bruce Campbell shit on in high def is, is a good thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. So looking forward to checking this out. That's pretty damn cool. Uh, from AGFA, uh, we've got the new one here, Jungle Trap and Run Coyote Run. Uh, yeah, so that is number 27 on the spines. Yet to check these out. I haven't watched fucking anything. I just realized, I literally have not watched anything from this update. I This is so stupid. Um, yeah, I don't really know much about these, to be honest. Um, yeah. But you know what? This is like one of my favorite lines right now. The uh, AGFA line. Um, they do they do such interesting work. They really do release some absolute dumpster trash films. But it's amazing. They just they they do such a good job with them. <laughs> um, yeah, Jungle Trap. I don't really know much about this one, but looks pretty damn cool. This is an older Screen Factory release that I had never picked. I actually forgot that this came out. And if you know me, like I have. Ton, like tons and tons of clicks. I forgot about this one. So when I ordered, I was like, you know what? I'm probably not going to get slipcover, which I think I only, out of like the hundred and something fucking collector's edition, I think I only have two without slipcovers. But anyways, I don't even give a fuck. But um, in fact, this was actually one of those ones I didn't care that I was, wasn't getting slipcover because I didn't like this, the artwork on it. I thought it was terrible. Anyways, uh, The Lawnmower Man. I had completely forgot about this release. And I think Lawnmower Man 2 is coming out soon also from... Who's putting that? Eh, Scorpion? I don't know. Someone's releasing that. But I wanted to pick this up because, you know, I have the DVD. So I wanted to upgrade because the, the Blu-ray actually has the um, the director's cut on it. And the director's cut is like like... 35 minutes longer. It's crazy. So the theatrical cut is 108 minutes and the director's cut is 141 minutes. Now, I haven't seen the theatrical version in a long time, but man, that is a big difference in uh, length. Like 30, that's not even, that's like 32, that's 33 minutes if you want to get precise about the math. Um, but yeah, that's a big difference in, in time. Um, 
so I'm very curious to see what they do with the time. Maybe I might even watch the theatrical and then do it and watch the director's cut right after. Probably not back to back. That'd be kind of silly, right? But yeah, so this is the, that's like, you know, the artwork that they did. The commissioned artwork. I, I that artwork's so ugly. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's so ugly. I actually prefer this a lot more. Um, but yeah, it's been years since I've seen Lawnmower Man, but yeah. Uh, from Olive, finally picked this up. This is so crazy, and I completely have forgotten about this release too, and I do have the VHS of this, and I don't know why, because, you know, Olive has been very quiet with their horror releases over the years, but this is an early one for them, and I just completely forgot about it. I think what happened was, when this thing came out, the, it was like always 40 bucks, and I got a really damn good price on this, but had to pick it up in this Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, which I love this anthology film, I think it's fantastic, with all the greats in it, man. We got Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, Donner Sutherland, Roy Castle's even in this, man. Good shit, man. I absolutely love this um, anthology. It's so great. Um, 1964. It's great shit, man. From Olive. Yes, I haven't picked up an Olive release in a long time because, like I said, man, they don't really release horror films anymore. You know, it was between the horror films and the black exploitation. That's pretty much the makeup of all my um, Olive films. But this is one that just eluded me. I f kind of forgot about it. So, yeah, happy to upgrade. Um,. Also, I'm gonna probably take this because I don't want you guys knowing what I fucking pay for this shit. I haven't opened this yet, but yeah, I, I didn't grab the first release of this because I wasn't really thinking I needed to upgrade this because I do have the the DVD, the double disc DVD from Scorpion and stuff. So when Code Red put out their first uh, Blu-ray, I was like, yeah, I'll pass on it. But then they reissued it again uh, with this artwork and yeah, Savage Streets, man, um, with Linda Blair. I really enjoyed this movie. I think it's pretty cool. I know Leanna Quigley's in this movie too. Uh, she plays, I believe, the younger sister, uh, John Vernon's in this. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen Savage Streets, but I thought, why the fuck not, man? My buddy got this in in his shop, and I was like, you know what, dude? Just hold me a copy. I'll come down and pick it up and shit. So, Savage Streets, good shit. Good exploitation. Um, from Kino, uh, this is from the Section 3... Um, video nasties list and this is one of the one of the only ones from the list that i was missing from the collection i think that actually has a decent release and that's the uh the chant of jimmy blacksmith australian film um dealing with uh you know racist racism with um you know the uh the native tribes and stuff like that uh, i've never seen this before i've always wanted to check this out. i've seen the trailer for this like hundreds of times i swear to god it's been on it's on so many different trailer compilations and shit like that but i always wanted to check it out because it did somehow make the the uh, video nasty section three list which is kind of crazy uh from what i've heard from people because it really doesn't belong on there um at all like a lot of the films even on the prosecuted list there, there's really no fucking reason why some of those movies are even on there but that's a whole nother conversation if you know what i'm saying um so yeah, this movie, wow, this is actually pretty long. Oh, no, so there's two different versions on here. So you get the international version, which is 117 minutes, and the Australian version, which is 122 minutes. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, the the chant of Jimmy Blacksmith. Looking forward to checking that out. Also from Kino, I finally picked up Curse of the Undead. Uh, actually, I did watch this. This is the first time watching me. I watched this, you know, about a month ago or whatever. 1959, um, uh, basically vampire in Western it's it's i love westerns as everybody knows i'm a big western fan um but then you put horror into like a western um theme you know like it's just it's such an interesting premise man to have horror films set in the in western times and shit like that and this is pretty cool this is pretty fun i really enjoy the curse of the undead it's, it's good stuff man good transfer uh also from kino i picked up uh tinerera um i believe what the fuck does this what does this go by What's the other title for this? I'm just, I'm totally talking, thinking out loud. What the hell is the other name for this movie? Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. I'm getting messages like crazy. I can't remember what the other title is for this movie. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Tiger Shark. <laughs> like, I forgot the fucking, the fucking, uh, it was um, double-sided artwork, man. It's fucking, what's, what's the name of this one? Oh, yeah. How about just pull it out of the slipcase, you fucking dummy? Idiot. Yeah. Yeah, Tiger Shark said it. That's actually what I always knew it as, not uh, not Tinerera. So, um, yeah, it even says Tiger Shark on the cover. Pff, fucking boom. Long days, man. Long days. All right. Yeah, that was from Keto. So, getting into Severin here. Um, yeah, this, this was kind of odd. This was kind of odd. So, I picked this up. I want to say I got this in the mail probably about a week before 
uh, Richard Stanley got canceled. Right. Got shit going down. I'm not getting into cancel culture and shit like that. Fuck those conversations. But anyways, all this shit came out about Richard Stanley. And uh, he he just instantly was fucking canceled. I'm like, oh, that's great. That's really fucking great. So uh, my shit just turned off there. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, anyways, I picked this up because, you know, I've been buying a lot of Severns up. The Other World documentary that he did, very, very strange. Um, very strange about... Uh, I was in the French Pyrenees um, and there's this like really strange kind of place where, and he had these, um, I, I, I guess he had visions there and, but a lot of people have seen things and they have like this really weird energy that goes on there and all this crazy shit happens. Like people lose memories and like, it's happened to so many different people. It's just like these weird phenomenons, these supernatural phenomenons that happen in this, um, this area, like, but there is a history and stuff. I don't want to give everything away, but it's pretty interesting. Like if you can kind of, if you just take it, if you take it for what it is, you're like, Oh fuck, it's crazy. But it's like shot so beautifully, man. Um, I don't know who the, the DP is. I don't think it was, um, Richard Stanley, but, uh, cinematography by Krim Hussein. Oh yeah, dude. It's so, it looks so fucking beautiful, man. But yeah, the other world, very weird and eccentric type documentary, but it's definitely fun. If you don't take it overly serious, I guess. <laughs> Even though it's fucking dead serious. Like, Richard Stanley is being dead serious in this documentary. It's, that's what kind of adds to the appeal of it, really. Uh, finally upgraded um, Patrick to Blu-ray. I know this is, like, was such an early release from Severn. I know it was, like, a slow month last month. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to grab some shit that I just need to grab. Yeah, so I upgraded my uh, um, Synapse DVD, I believe, um, to Patrick on Blu-ray. Since I picked up Patrick to, I think, last month or whatever... Which I still haven't watched, but I plan on doing a double feature, actually. Maybe we'll do this summer. Um, it's been a while since I've seen Patrick, but, you know, me. I love me and my my, uh, my exploitation films, man, so. But, uh, yeah, Patrick, man. Pretty cool stuff. And I believe... I don't know if this is out of... Is it out of print? No, I don't think it's out of print. I don't even, I don't fucking know, man. Whatever. Uh, some more Severn here. We got uh, Horrors of Spider Islands from 1960. I've actually never seen this movie before. Heard of it. I love this artwork. It's so great. The colors on that is so cool, man. It's fucking great stuff. And is that the same? Yeah, there's actually another artwork too. Um, it's crazy how much artwork they have for this, but pretty cool. Um, a genre classic. Oh yeah, it's got the uh, the alternate di or, uh, version of the film on here too. It's Hot in Paradise. I believe it's like a super cut version or something like that. Or it's yeah, I think it's way shorter. Something like that. So. I want to say the American version is like very, very cut. It doesn't have the length of it, but if I, my memory serves me correctly, I think it is. But yeah, Horizon Spider Island. Whoa, cool. Keep grabbing shit over here. Sorry about my reach. I picked up some Mondo Macabros. I waited for the standards because these fuckers sold out in like five minutes. I wasn't really too concerned about grabbing like the special editions because they're just a red case and like alternate artwork or something. I don't know. I'm cool with just waiting for the standards. But anyways, finally, Panic Beats comes to Blu-ray. Uh, Paul Nashi, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, it's about time because, man, this DVD has been out of print for so long. And it, I'm, I'm very happy that, that Mono Macabro is starting to dig into their vaults and finally release some of these films. Hopefully we can get a lot of, like, the Bollywood shit, man. I would love to see those films come to Blu-ray, man, because they, they have so much crazy shit in their vaults. And no one else has released them. So I'm assuming that Mondo still has the rights to a lot of their back catalog that's been out of print for years. I don't know what they're thinking with those or what's going on with those. But um, I digress. Um, yeah, so Paul Nashi and Panic Beats. Uh, great stuff. And then we got Queens of Evil. And I believe this is, yeah, this is a French-Italian film uh, from 1970. Queens of Evil. I've uh, never seen this one. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty fucking cool, man. It does. Ray Lovelock's on it, in it. That's cool, man. Cool. So looking forward to checking that one. And, of course, Blood Ceremony, uh, directed by Jorge Grabu, um, which is pretty damn cool. And there, there is two different versions on here. So you get the fully uncut international version, the alternate Spanish versions, which is cool. So, I mean, these releases, man. Mondo Macaro has just been knocking this shit out the fucking park uh, with the releases. So, But, yeah, Blood Ceremony. And yeah, so this this is fucking this is such a great release. Actually, probably my favorite movie of the year still. I've only watched maybe like 
25 to 30 2021 movies. I guess that's still a lot by by some standards, but but this is still my favorite one I've seen. And I've watched pretty much all the bigger ones this year, and a lot of them have been kind of disappointing, man. Like, I don't know. I don't want to get into that, but this one I loved. So I had to order the Canadian Raven Banner um, special limited edition and stuff, but love the artwork on this, man. And that is Psycho Gorman, limited hunky boy ultimate edition with free trading cards inside. So yeah, it comes with this slip box here. Um, and then this artwork right here, Psycho Gorman, that is fantastic artwork. Absolutely love this shit. That is so great, dude. And it comes in a fat case too. I was surprised. I was like fatten it up, man. Doing some UK shit here up in the Canada. I guess it kind of makes sense. We're kind of connected there, aren't we? Um, but yeah, no, I've never really seen too many Canadian releases that uh, deal with the fat cases so that's pretty cool um then we do have some cards in here they come they actually came in like an actual plastic sleeve which is kind of cool too so i'm not going to pull them out but um a couple little advertisements and what we got we got the dvd blu-ray and soundtrack in here so it is a triple disc which is pretty damn cool and i believe the artwork behind it is the same Ooh, wrong way uh no it's actually different so it's actually this artwork right here so if you see that different than i mean it is a little bit different than the actual slip cover just a little bit different but yeah cool release man um th these things sold out quick i think it was limited to like a couple thousand and i'm glad i grabbed one because i went back like a day or late day or two later and they were sold out i was like holy shit crazy so people are jumping all over the psycho gorman i noticed a few of the homies from the from the community picked it up i know my man tom horsball picked one up i saw it on instagram so that's cool man tom picked one up but yeah very cool you know kind of special ultimate edition here from raven banner happy to have that right there like i said i love the movie so good shit uh moving on to the vinegar syndrome stuff and we've got an upgrade in hitcher in the dark i was fucking stoked to see hitcher in the dark come out man um yeah, so this will, you know, upgrade from my Screak Show DVD. I love the artwork. I still love this artwork so much, man. Umberto Lenzi. It's like an American slasher film. Lenzi did a few of these at the time, around this time period, you know, later 80s and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, here's the other artwork. Vinegar Syndrome, obviously knocking it out the fucking... I don't know why I'm always, like, way over here. You guys want to check it out right here? Like, what the fuck am I doing? So stupid. I can I can never figure out which side to go because everything moves opposite and my brain doesn't work like that, so I'm stupid. Um, but yeah, Hitcher in the Dark, good shit. I, it's been a while since I've watched it. Um, yeah. So, and here's another upgrade in Rush Week. Uh, I remember Rush Week being pretty average, in, you know, in the slasher genre. Again, it's later '80s. Yeah, '89. That one says '89 too, so it's probably about the same. I think I think those dates are about right. Um, not really the greatest. Like honestly. This I think this might be better than my DVD artwork. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, and then we just got that on here too. So, But yeah, Rush Week. Later 80s slasher film. You know, the genre was suffering at this time, but still a very, very cool release. Looking forward to checking those transfers out. Uh, I did actually watch Death Promise. Fucking fun-ass movie, man. <laughs> it's just so much fun. I've seen it before. But I thought I'd pop this in and check out the transfer, and it looked fantastic. Actually, it was like, whoa, that transfer is ridiculous. But I don't know why I keep getting surprised at Vinegar Syndrome transfers because they really do resurrect, like, you know, diarrhea and make it look like fucking gold. It's crazy. I'm not saying this is diarrhea, but, you know, Death Promise, fun ass movie. Um, it's good shit, man. Good seven. When did this come out? 70, 77, yeah. Good 70s. Good 70s shit right there. Exploitation. Uh, then we got uh, The Fear. Uh, I did watch this actually too. I had never, I hadn't seen this movie. So I couldn't remember if I'd ever seen this one or if I'd seen part two. But it turns out I have seen both because when I started watching this, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember this movie now. But I don't think I'd seen it since it came out in like 95, 96, whenever it got released back in the day. Yeah, it says 95. And uh, yeah, man, th this shit is hilarious, dude. Like, man, the dude in this like, it's obviously like a rubber suit that's supposed to look like a wood suit and shit like that. You know, it's dealing with people's fears and stuff about all these people that go to this retreat and, uh, you know, they have to talk about their fears and, um, it, it's got some decent moments in it. It's actually got some pretty decent moments. I didn't mind it, you know, for a nineties film. I mean, I don't know how it stack up in the realm of 1995 releases, but who knows? I'm sure it couldn't be that bad. Cause 95 is actually a pretty shitty year. And, uh, we got last, last, last grasp. Uh, this one is from, what is this? Also from 1995. So we've seen patterns here. 
um, yeah, this one right here has got Robert Patrick in it. I'd never even heard of this movie. This was this was an interesting release from uh, from Vinegar Syndrome, and I'm glad that they're dropping some '90s shit, man, because the '90s needs a little bit more love. I know the '90s isn't the greatest decade, but it's always cool to see these type of films get releases because you know, resurrect them, man. I'd never, like I said, I'd never heard of this one before. It was kind of interesting, but you know, it's um, it, it's kind of it's kind of interesting what goes on in this. I don't really want to get into the plot of it, but you know, some of the shit that's happening was decent and stuff, but eh, I don't know. It was okay. It was okay. Robert Patrick was pretty decent. In it. He's a fucking dick in that movie, like a total dick. Uh, and then of course we've got uh, forgotten Gialli volume three, man, these box sets. I hope they do like 10 of these because I'm going to buy every one of them. Oh, you know what? I haven't even opened the, that's how busy I've been, man. I haven't even, so this comes with autopsy and everyone has shown these, but I can't show the alternate artwork because I haven't even opened mine. Uh, then we got Murder Mansion, which I'm super excited to check this out, man. I've always known about this movie. Uh, it says 72 on here. Never seen it. So looking forward to checking that one out. And Crazy Desires of a Murderer. Yeah, and this one's from 77. Uh yeah so cool man yeah so like i said i'm, I'm really hoping that uh that they do tons more of these because i'll keep grabbing all these but anything from vinegar syndrome is definitely worth your time because they do beautiful releases and transfers um th this is crazy dude like okay so i have all the the jackie chan films from the 88 films line now and it's just it's so weird to me that after releasing like 15 or 16 of them they went and gave this movie the craziest treatment <laughs> and that is the young master like this is one of those you know comparatively to you know arrows releases it's pretty much the same thing same type of hard box you know it's got the it's got the poster um and it's got the big thick fucking booklet and shit which is it's just so crazy that this movie i mean i've actually never seen this one but yeah so it's a big thick ass book and then of course uh, the movie itself here the young master I've already flipped the artwork because I love original Hong Kong artworks and, and Asian artworks and stuff. Um, it does come with a couple different cuts on it. Uh, the Hong Kong cut, 106 minutes, and the international export cut, which is 90 minutes. Oh, and then there's an extended export cut, which is 99 minutes. There's actually three cuts on here. That's the thing with these 88 film releases, man. Almost all these Jackie Chan movies have at least two to three, at least two. There's always an, another cut of the film, but a lot of them have three cuts. It's just crazy, man. So, uh, yeah, I don't know when this one came out. It doesn't actually have the year on the back. I'm not sure where this stacks up in his, but yeah. So, and of course it's got, you know, the film cards in here and shit and double disc beautiful releases man um 88 films i just I, I was just shocked that they were doing for you know so late after release i don't like know how many more of these jackie chan films are going to release but i know there's another one coming out but just fantastic i can't believe how much love chan's got over the last few years this is crazy it's so awesome and the last two are from arrow and actually the one and only 4k that i picked up this month and i think i even said on the podcast i didn't pick up any um, 4Ks, but I forgot I picked up Flash Gordon. And yeah, I picked up the standard 4K because, so, it was, this was crazy, man. So, you know, the, the the big thick arrow release of Flash Gordon was like, I think it was like 60, 65 bucks for the 4K. And then the uh, the 4K version was 25. I was like, it's 40 bucks less. It's 40 bucks less. I'm like, that's ridiculous. And it was crazy because the standard Blu-ray release was like 35 <laughs> like what the fuck? i think there was a price mistake but anyways i ended up getting this for 25 bucks so that's pretty cool had it been years and years and years since i'd seen flash gordon i hadn't seen it since i was a kid it's still a goofy cheesy ridiculous film it's it's fun though i think it does i think the biggest problem with this movie is that it runs a little bit too long because i was watching i was like holy shit this thing's long 111 minutes it runs just under two hours it kind of feels like that at times too and it does have some lulls and stuff but it's pretty good i will say the 4K transfer on this is, uh, it looks ridiculous. It looks like spectacular. It's crazy. So, um, but yeah, Flash Gordon on 4K. And yeah, like I said, I completely forgot that I picked this up. So I've been kind of very, very selective with my 4K joints. Sorry, my, my sinus are bugging. Oh yeah, and the last release, which is actually kind of anticlimactic considering I showed this off last month. But so the day after I posted my update. I actually got the replacement for this. And that is the, uh, he came from the swamp, the William Griffey collection. And this one actually came in one piece. 
everything is all good to go. And I'm like, yes, okay. So I gave the other set to Dylan. I felt bad that I gave it to him in the shape it was because, you know, the two middle cases were smashed up. But he's like, I don't give a fuck, man. I can find cases for that, replace them and shit. So I'm like, here you go. Yeah, just gift that shit on, man. Gift it on. Don't be a reseller and sell it for like hundreds of dollars. No, I'm just, I don't care. I don't give a fuck what you guys do. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to breaking these in. I'll definitely get into this this summer. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I came from the swamp. Um, that's it for the update. Um, I don't know if I'm even going to do an update for April because I literally have like nothing. It seems like everything that I have is on pre-order. Like I have, I think I have eight or nine box sets on pre-order. So it's for like May, June, stuff like, and I have so many things that are on pre-order. It's like money is just tied up in all these different places and shit. So, but maybe, maybe by a chance I'll actually get my uh, Warner Archive order, which I seriously fucking doubt I'm going to, considering it hasn't even shipped yet. Apparently Dave hasn't even got a shipping notice for it too, which is crazy, man. It's been like three and a half, almost, almost a month since we ordered that. That's fucking nuts. And I'd seen people even get their orders even days after so i don't know what the hell is going on man i hope they didn't like fucking lose the order some shit because that would piss me off because i ordered literally 20 movies so because i got way far behind on those because they're expensive here anyways i digress guys um that is going to do it for the update i like i said i'll be back uh sometime um maybe at the end of the month if i get some stuff and i i think i've got like three blu-rays for this month so far and it's nothing spectacular whatsoever like i said there's so many things that are just stuck in the post i don't know if i'll even get them so but anyways guys hope you guys enjoyed leave your comments down below and um i will check you later until then deuces <laughs>